Hello and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to look at the offset command and trim and extend. Offset is the most important. If you're doing tree protection plans it's really useful. I use it all the time. And all it does is sort of copy and scale to a specified distance. If I sort of quickly show that, select offset and it asks for the distance and you can pick two points on the screen as a distance or you can just enter a value and I'll put in two meters and then it wants me to select the object so I'll click this polyline and depending on which side of the original I move the mouse will be the side it offsets to so I'll click here and then enter to finish. So it's created a sort of copy, a clone, expanded out to the two meter distance. If I measure that, use the perpendicular, you can see it's two meters. And it'll be two meters there, across there, from that point to that point, etc. Really useful for when doing say ground protection around buildings for tree protection plans. I'll just load in the drawing with the tree survey on and hide the tree, the top of trees. And let's grab this. So let's assume this tree's around here somewhere. It's not actually covering the footprints with its root protection area, which is this magenta circle. But it's so close that to fence this tree off with protective fencing would leave no room for anyone to, to build these the walls and put up scaffolding. So we'd normally put an area of ground protection around the buildings and then the fencing against the ground protection. And the ground protection will be heavy duty boarding or steel plates or something just to protect the soil from being compacted by sort of foot traffic and small vehicles etc. So to do that I shall use the offset and I'm going to choose a value of 1.5 can of course use any value you like and then I'll select this object and expand it out and this one and then I would just draw my ground protection area just in the section I want to use it and I'll do one here to about there I go straight across to that corner. And close. I'll just make these a little bit thinner because they're using global width. I'll put zero in. Put some solid hatching on. Give them a colour. And I'm going to select the boundary lines and send everything to the back. And then delete the offsets, so I don't need them anymore. And then I'll get my fencing from this boundary to this corner, across to there. and up to the boundary just give that a colour so we can see it stand out a bit give it some dash and a bit of width so that's sort of the main use for it for protection plans 
and you'd put dimensions on and label etc. Now you could of course uh, expand this ground protection to you know to cover more of the area but you've got to understand that for small companies small construction companies this this ground protection can be quite expensive to hire if it's going to be sort of heavy duty stuff steel plates and things so maybe it's best to consult with your client one of the problems with offsetting lines and things this is a polyline so it lends itself very easily to the offset but if I explode it so it's just lines so if this had been drawn with just lines and I go to offset it and you can see I've still got 1.5 so I can just click enter it does the lines individually and I've got a gap which doesn't help me at all because I really do you know I've now got to sort of guess the corner so it's just easier and quicker in this situation just to grab the polyline just quickly stick a line on and then do the offset draw whatever you need to draw and then just delete both lines and you can offset just about anything within reason I can offset a circle if I click there so I want that circle offset to that distance does it and splines as well if I needed to put a say a little footpath coming out of here a nice curvy footpath it's going to go around the site here it's a little bit tight there and you know you don't want to redraw that to try and get the other side of the footpath so you just use offset and if I want it a meter wide I just put a meter in click it offset over and I've got a one meter wide footpath and then you would just adjust the little bit sitting out so it's really handy very handy tool and it can save a lot of time and work so I now look at the trim command trim simply trims entities to another entity which we could sort of call the cutting edge if I draw two lines there and click trim and just mouse hover over it's just giving me a preview of what it's going to do and you can see it's trimming that line against that line if I come to the other end of that line it trims it there and then you click and it's trimmed and now trim to that one really handy if I have if I just copy a bit of this hedge move it out there and trim I can just cut it back to this inner curb so it's really useful the trim command actually changed um, in 2021 version and the old method used to be you'd have to first select the cutting edge and then right click and then select the the trim edge if I um, sort of show that you can go back to the old method by clicking mode and if I can get down and click standard 
and then I'll escape and redo it. And now it's asking me for an object. So I've got to select an object, enter, and now it'll just trim against that object. That's the old method. If you use that method, you can change it with the mode. But um, it is actually quicker to use the, the new quick method where it sort of gives you a preview of what it's going to do. And you'll find all sorts of uses for it. I mean, for instance, you may perhaps want to hide this circle that overhangs the road. So you can just trim and it's doing in sections because I think it's meeting other entities that are alongside it. I'm not sure. But it's trimmed back. Now, the next one is the extend. So I'll just draw some lines. Let's put a line there. Another line there. and extend and it's sort of trim in reverse so if I mouse over that you can see it wants to extend it there if I do that one it's gonna extend it onto that one if I come up to this end it won't extend because it wants to go that way and there's nothing there to extend it to so this half of the line it can extend that won't extend because I'm asking it to go that direction there's nothing there so I click that one click that one and actually I can probably click that one yet yeah. and again it's handy it's just for you know if you if you've got a I don't know a line here a bit of fence maybe and you want to extend it onto the footpath then you can just come here rather than you trying to move it and keep it straight and so it's one nice line it's it's a handy little feature and like with the trim uh, the method changed 2021 before you would have to select the target object right click and then extend onto it and again with the extend you can change the mode down there and to finish off i'm just going to look at explode because then we've covered really the main modifiers that you're going to need i'm not going to look at stretch or mirror you know you just hardly ever use such things for for the work we're doing so explode simply breaks something down into its smaller parts if it can. So if I switch my topo trees back on. So a block is made up of multiple entities. I can explode that. And it's broken it down into lots of smaller entities there's a circle in the middle it's changed color because as a block the color was set to use by layer but as separate entities they're set to use by block if I change it to by layer it's taken on the green and I can explode a polyline and it explodes it into lines And if I had a polyline which contained arcs, and explode that, it breaks it down into lines and separate arcs. Explode is useful for, you know, exploding if you if you've copied a site plan or something as a block then you can explode it back into its little bits and pieces. 
and that really covers everything for this video so i'll see you on the next one bye bye